Hello, my dear ones. Today, we're going to talk about the Masonic Cipher. It's pretty fascinating. Uh, since Dan Brown wrote the book, uh, The Da Vinci Code, The Lost Symbol, Angels and Demons, um, a lot of really neat information came from Dan Brown's investigation into uh, the Templars and the Freemasons. Now first we're going to, before we get into the Masonic uh, cipher, we're going to talk about the G in the Freemason icon. And a lot of people think this means God or Grand Architect. And they do mean that. But I think it's more Euclidean. I think the G stands for geometry. But not only geometry in a Euclidean Neoplatism type way, but also an introspection of our own selves. The grand architect, the geometry inside of us. And this is, from my understanding, second degree Freemason education you know there's 33 degrees uh and not to go back on the number nine but three times three is nine right it's a 33 is the famous number uh for the masons that's the top degree but it's also um you know uh all the layers of how complicated some of these secret societies get and now it is secretive, but all these levels you can investigate and figure out. So today we're going to talk a little bit about level two. Uh, the ciphers are a little bit more involved, but just to kind of preface uh, where we're going with this, okay? So uh, you are supposed to believe in a higher power if you want to become a Freemason, right? And at the level, at the second level... You are supposed to look into yourself, the four layers of self uh, and the four layers of the universe. And now, this is my take on it. I don't know if this is correct or not, but I think these four levels are geometric. And I think they're talking about the dimensions. I think they're talking about a dot, a line, a superface or plane or a solid or a 3D object. And these are also inside of us. There are dots, lines, superfaces, and solids. And I also think these are the four levels of, of being, right? I think you have physical, celestial, spiritual, and divine. Right, so pretty neat. So because I think that's how the divine started, right? And then this divine thing uh, was lonely and it made two of itself and then it made four of itself. Then it made a dimension. It made a, uh, a solid It kind of branched out. So quite fascinating. Um, and what's even more fascinating is uh, just the way, and I, I'm not really uh, a proponent or opposed to um, uh, secret societies. I really don't know enough. I mean, I, I've heard a lot about, you know, skull and bones and, and their weird practices and some of the people who were members and some of the damage that they've done to this planet. And I'm not, I don't have firsthand knowledge. I don't have any primary sources. Uh, even though a lot of it does look solid, uh, I can't really make a judgment at this time. And Freemasons, uh, who supposedly are the descendants of the Templars, supposedly stole the Holy Sepulcher or had this secret that Mary Magdalene and Jesus uh, that, 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 you know, it's very involved that Jesus was the son of Cleopatra and Mark Anthony, so part royalty. He leaves Rome uh, to go to Gaul, which is now France, married to Mary Magdalene, 
and starts the Merovingian royalty in France, right? The first royalty in France before the Charlemagne Carolingians took over. But who knows? Who really knows, right? Uh, but what's fascinating is the way uh, some of the uh, secret societies think. It, it's, it's almost as, you know, and a lot of it is mysticism. And, you know, during the Spanish Inquisition and when the Christians kind of went on their crusades, they would snuff out a lot of the science and a lot of the religions that they didn't understand. And a lot of these religions were based on science uh, like paganism and druidism. Uh, so these, 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 um, these mystic cults had to go underground because they would have been fed to the lions, the Christian lions. And so, you know, you have a lot of this uh, secret information that has been carried uh, on through centuries. And just now with the Internet, with the information age, are we starting to get tidbits and tastes of this information, which is very, very fascinating. Like the one thing that free that that that, that Freemasons that, that I don't know which level this might come up, but you know I've asked a Freemason once about God, and he said that God doesn't exist, and I was kind of confused because I thought, well, if you have this, if you want to be a Freemason, I thought you had to believe in some type of God. You couldn't be an atheist, and he said, you know, um, existence is too small of a concept for God. Existence in our brain means something right but you know god is the creator he's not part of the creation he's not part of the existence so so pretty neoplatonism pretty euclidean geometric kind of concept of you know you've got this geometry like 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 when you create a garden you know you're not you're not the tomatoes, you're not the cantaloupe, you're not the kale, you know, you're the gardener, you know, so uh, you're not part of the existence of that garden, but yet you're there, right? So pretty, pretty fascinating, I'm probably not explaining that properly, but but just really, really neat, the hierarchies, and this is, this is you know, early on in the understanding of Freemasonry, and, and I mean, exponentially, it gets more and more involved, and you know, and, and it's just the tip of the iceberg. I really don't know anything about it. But, but, but what fascinates me is ciphers. And Mason, Masonic Freemason ciphers are quite fascinating. This is the way to send codes, you know, uh, during the war or during royalty, right? You'd have these ciphers. Um, and the first one that we're going to look at basically is called the uh, pig pen cipher. It's because when you look down at a, at a pig pen, a lot of your pig pens are, are shaped kind of like this, right? So this is a pig pen cipher, or also known as a Freemason cipher. So it's a uh, tic-tac-toe uh, grid, right? A three by three, and then it's also an X, and this is where all your letters fit in, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, all the way across. And then when you want to send a code, Right, uh, let's see, I can show you this the best way possible. Is you break down, see the M would be that part of that X, right? And then the A would be that part of the, of the tic-tac-toe. And then if you wanna use the second letter, it would be the dot, right? If you wanna use the second letter in the cipher, you would do that shape of the diagram with a dot, and that way it would instruct people to know, right? Uh, now, uh, yeah, that's pretty simple. Uh, if, if everybody knew that this is what it was and anybody, everybody could decipher it, but you create keys, and a key is basically you can start to do different things, and this is actually an original picture, and again, unfortunately, I only have a, only have a black and white copier, but this is a... Um, an original cipher from back in the 1600s. Uh, I don't know who specifically this belonged to, but you can see they changed up their key completely. They don't even use the X. They basically have uh, three letters per each um, spot, right? Minus two at the end gives you 26 letters. You could even put some numbers in there, but they have uh, a different amount of dots for each letter within that section. 
So pretty cool. And then it can even get more involved. You could start to make ciphers that look like this, right? You put your symbols on top of all this. Put your letters where the symbols are, and then your letter would be represented by, by one of these symbols, right? So pretty amazing. Uh, I find it really, really fascinating. I don't uh, have enough material today to show you, um, you know, some of the uh, messages that have been sent during wartime or during times of the Crusades or even after. But uh, really, really neat. Here's, uh, here's where it says the Knights Templar. And you can see how they've basically taken each section of the diagram to represent a letter to spell out Knights Templar. Yeah. So, um, pretty cool. I was going to show you some magic squares and talk about Aber Albert Durer, uh, which uh, he was a, a genius back in the 1500s, uh, the 16th century, maybe the 15th century into the 1400s. But he was the one who uh, has that, and I don't know the painting, uh, but he's, uh, I, I know it's called Melancholy. Uh, and uh, and he basically has a magic square in the picture with a solid and uh, he's melancholy because I think and a lot of people say he's melancholy because even though you have all the medium to make this art he was an artist right you don't always have this inspiration for creativity so it makes you sad right but I believe Durer as the genius that he was I believe he had all the tools of knowledge, but still couldn't come up with the answer of the universe. And for any genius, that is maddening, you know, uh, frustrating to spend hours on end doing the mathematical equations, taking, um, you know, uh, for a lot of these geniuses, um, you know, uh, enhanced herbs, uh, peyote, uh, mescaline, DMT to try to reach these heights and, uh, and still, you know, get close enough where you can almost taste it, but still not get the answer. Right. Because I don't really think there is an answer. I think it's, 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 it's a process, right? I think the answer is, you know, it's, it's, it's a journey, not a destination. But anyway, that's, uh, that's the Freemason cipher. Uh, there's a lot more involved in that. There's obviously a lot more involved with the Freemason Society. But uh, just wanted to kind of touch on that. If anybody has any comments or wants to give me a little bit more information on that or wants to send me further down the rabbit hole, I'd certainly be open-minded to that. But uh, again, thanks for watching another episode of Improving Your Life Through Knowledge. Please like, please share, please subscribe. Please watch the other videos uh, and learn and, um, and get some more knowledge. All right. Have a great day.